Live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to theCUBE, I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host, you Piscar, and you're watching theCUBE, and actually Bear Grylls is going to be on the keynote shortly, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit more tech first. First of all, I want to welcome back to the program, Chris Kaderis is the Senior Vice President and General Manager for EMEA with Nutanix, and welcome to the program for first time, uh, Sylvain Siu, Senior Director of Systems Engineering, also for EMEA with Nutanix. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so, so Chris, uh, you know, we were thinking back two years ago at the first European show in Vienna. Uh, I had you on the program, yep. and, and you were you were fresh on. I always love getting people when they're fresh into <laughs> the company because they have the why they are joining and why they think they're doing things. So, uh, bring us up to speed. Two years, a um, couple things have changed at Nutanix. A couple things have changed in the industry. Um, but uh, you know, why don't you bring us up to speed? Sure. No, I'm happy to do that. Um, you know, first I'll tell you that some of the things I told you on the show two years ago um, actually proved true. I could see the energy in Vienna at that time in regards to what I called kind of the religious following in Nutanix because of the compellingness of the technology and the solution. And that hasn't stopped. Um, one thing that, was, that I wasn't quite prepared for is just the rate of growth of this company and how our customers really embraced us in the market. Now, uh, in the EMEA market, we've had some success, I would say. The team's done a really good job. Uh, when I started, we had less than 1,000 customers. Now we have over 3,000 customers. Uh, when I started with Nutanix, um, you know, in the, in the region we had about 200 employees. Now we have almost 800 employees in the region. So collectively as a region we're growing uh, a bit faster than the rest of the world, which is a good thing for us. Um, and you know, customers are showing their appreciation for it. So it's been a really good experience. Um, but something like the, the hyper growth that we have at Nutanix takes some getting used to when you come from other companies. Um, but it's been a really good thing for our customers. The thing that I think I'm the most proud of is we've done that hyper growth and we've still kept our NPS score above 90 for our customers. So our customers are getting a really good experience, both from our sales teams, our product, our implementation teams, and our support teams, that it's kept you know, everything in check for our customers, which I'm really proud of. Yeah, well, congratulations on that. Uh, Sylvain, I have to think that your team ha has something to do with that, that NPS store, scores. Uh, you know, over my career, I, I got great respect for the SEs. They're the ones that have to not only know the product inside now, but they, they, they need to be working closely with the customers and you know, have a good viewpoint on the customers. So, um, you know, being here at a European show, want, want to get your viewpoint. Tell us what's different here compared to what you hear uh, from people back at corporate. Uh, you know, what, what, what are some of the differences your, your, your team sees? Uh, so we have a, a very good relationship with corporate, so we are really aligned and we evolved in the product in the um, same way than the other region. I think we was uh, faster on uh, some very big accounts uh, and um, that was really surprising and also uh, the, uh, I think the timing uh, for the need of the customer to solve situation after virtualization was the exact timing uh, when we start uh, in EMEA. The product was mature enough so that was exactly the right timing. It's five years ago when I joined. So really, we solved this first uh, th this first situation, and after that, everything we promise in terms of making this platform a true cloud platform, cloud platform for enterprise is there. Adding all these services on top of it to have the same kind of services you can see on public cloud is there. Yeah, we we show it uh, the, the, the this morning, and now giving the ability uh, to the customer to manage situation with this uh, cloud from different providers and uh, what is on premise is there. So having all the control, the cost uh, on the, uh, the compliance and so on, help them a lot to uh, manage the situation and take the control uh, every day. So what is what is the adoption? You know, maybe compared to the US for you know the core products that you have now versus the additional services. Is there, is there a big change or a big difference between the US and Europe, or what are you seeing with your customers? So, uh, we follow the same path. There is some uh, region, and uh, maybe we really increase some region that we invest later than the others. So, of course, France, Germany, uh, UK, Northern Europe was really at the beginning, and after that we have more Southern region or Eastern region that come after. But we are surprised sometimes because uh, people can jump uh, to the last technology faster than the others. So I don't think there is really rules. There is really people with pain points. We have the solution and when it fits, they go faster. 
Yeah, I think, I think from a solution perspective, we're driving at the same rate our emerging technologies into the market as our other regions in the world. Um, in some cases, we're ahead, like on things like IoT, right? Um, you know, what was originally called Sherlock, right? We're, we're ahead, we have a like, first customer, second customer that's starting to adopt, so we, have, we do have markets within the EMEA region that are much early adopters compared to other regions. You know, I think of places like the Middle East, right? The Nordics, uh, France, right? Adopting much quicker uh, than some other regions of the world. So we see our new products starting to roll. We're really excited about Xi Leap. Um, you know, I know that the first instantiation went live, I think yesterday or today within the Americas. We're looking forward to going live within London um, and then moving it into mainland Europe from there. And I think that will be a huge difference maker for us in the markets as well. So looking at those regions specifically, you know, I know uh, there's a couple of markets in Europe, uh, especially Germany, that have such strict data uh, sovereignty laws yep. that it makes it really difficult to actually do business from a DR or cloud perspective. How's Nutanix dealing with that? Yeah, I think that's where we, when we have our SaaS-based products, that's a challenge, right? When we have our cloud-based products, that's a challenge, right? So for our cloud-based products, we have a plan really quickly to go into places that have you know, data sovereignty uh, compliance you know, regulations that they have to adhere to. So Germany, we have a plan to go into Germany really quickly. Um, we obviously have a plan to go into some other markets, Amsterdam, we have a plan to go into London for cloud. Um, for SaaS, um, a lot of customers are consuming SaaS and they're okay if there's a good security you know, parameter around SaaS. So they're consuming Salesforce.com without data centers, they're consuming other products that way. So um, as long as you put the right security parameters in place, then their consumption model around SaaS is typically going to work. I don't, I don't see us uh, distributing SaaS you know, data centers all throughout every market in the world you know, to, to, to do that. Our core product, um, right now consumption is mostly local. Right, so uh, most of our, and it's consumed either in appliance way or it's consumed in a software way. So that's not something that we have to we have to worry about. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You wonder if the North America has a greater adoption of public cloud. Um, if that actually gives you an advantage in the EMEA region uh, here to get deeper with some of the you know the core and essential offerings. It, do, it does. It does. It customers will adopt a private cloud because of some of those data sovereignty you know, regulations, right? So, um, but a lot of the Uber clouds have come in and solved that. They've come in into country. They've created Gov clouds, right? They've done it in Germany, they've done it in the UK. So they're starting to solve that, but they have to put out a lot of investment to do, to, to do that. But it has given us a lead, right, um, in the marketplace. But there are certain markets that are very much like the US market. So the UK, you know, uh, it's very similar to the, to the US market in regards to Uber cloud or public cloud adoption. So in that, in that market, we have a lot of opportunities for something like Beam, right? Because they've consumed a lot of you know, the other Uber clouds, whether it's AWS, GCP, Azure, and we have that opportunity to you know, sit down and provide them with solutions. Uh, Sylvain, what, what, what else are you hearing from your customers? What, what are some of the pain points that they're feeling that uh, you know, your team's able to help with? So, um, Clearly in the past we saw the proliferation of the VM uh, and we find a way to control that. But with the cloud, the proliferation is uh, without any limits. So really this is something important for, for the customer to take back the control, uh, take the control of the shadow IT and, and so on. And, um, oh, it's very lowly. And, um, and uh, also I, I want to, to take a specific point as that uh, really the R&D are really uh, uh, taking care of what we see in the field. I will take just an example, the synchronous replication, uh, metro clustering and stuff like this to have a uh, high availability uh, between side and so on, is typically uh, European. Because we have fiber, we are really a city close to each other and so on. In America, that makes no sense. Yeah. And really, at, at really early stage of the company, we get the, uh, the really the, um, uh, the, uh, the R&D taking care of that, the, the developing specifically for our market, what is needed for our market. And it means that we are really global company and not really American company. We have also R&D in different places. We have in Serbia, with Frame, uh, we have in India and so on. So really to be uh, really taking care of each issue or pain point of the customers is really our main driver. So one of those other differences I see a lot is, is you know, the, um, the scale of the organization, right? The size. So, you know, what is an SMB in, in the Americas 
might be a you know an enterprise in Europe. So what are what are the solutions you have for those types of customers or for that problem? So definitely we we need so we are talking to customers who have a critical size. You know, I say they have a they need to have a minimum of a number of VM to face the issue of the bottleneck of the storage or the management part and so on. But also we have examples of small customers who just need a platform that works and don't want to have anyone taking care of it. And uh, so now it's like uh, your phone, you don't take care of the storage and CPU and so on. It's just your application and that's it. Could be internal, external and so on. So really, uh, the, the SMB of course is not the main market for us, it's more the big account and, and so on. But we have all kind of customers in any uh, verticals. There is no uh, specific one that, uh, that we cover. And it's uh, really because the platform is something that it becomes just normal to be invisible. Yeah, I would add on that if you, if you don't mind. So I'd say that um, the nice thing about the product is, is it, it's in a form factor and a pricing mechanism that can be consumed from SMB all the way up through global accounts. That's the nice thing. Now, maybe we spend a lot of our field resource on mid-market up, right? Because that's where we get larger transactions from customers and it's just a, it's a value conversation in regards to return on investment. Um, but the nice thing is our product can be consumed at the, at the smallest customer. We have just released new pricing mechanisms that allow our customers to now consume at much smaller levels, right? So not only for SMB, but for robo, right? Because if you think about it, if you just have one size fits all pricing structure, how does that work in the data center and that same price doesn't work in the robo area? So you have to give the customers the ability to look at the same experience in the remote office or the small sites compared to a data center site. And you know, that's something that we've just kind of you know, brought to the market in the last you know, three or four months. And I think that's a real advantage of not only the product, but the pricing structure. All right. uh, Chris, I want to give you the final word. Uh, as, as, as EMEA customers, what do you want them taking away uh, for, from, from this week? Sure. Um, I, I think what, what they've already told me, and I'll tell you, you know, which is good, because it's what I want them to take away, is just the credibility that Nutanix is here for the enterprise workload. Uh, they can look at their entire data center delivery mechanism on a Nutanix platform. Um, that also Nutanix is a company they should be looking for for their cloud-based platform. Um, there, there is a decision in the marketplace to be had right now around what do you use for your cloud, lack of a better word, orchestration layer, cloud you know, automation layer. Um, and there's only a few choices in the market today. Right, some of them are more open source, some of them are specific vendors, and uh, what I want them to take away is Nutanix is an option for that. Um, leave it up to me and my team to prove why we think we're the best option for it, um, but that's really what I want them to take away. The credibility of tier one platforms, you know, running Nutanix in their data center, and then two, Nutanix for the cloud-based platform. Well, congratulations on the progress. Uh, I want to say some of the feedback I've heard from customers is, uh, despite how fast Nutanix has been growing, they still feel that they're getting the personal touch uh, and, and don't feel like just a number uh, for some fast growing company. So congrats on that, and I, I know a lot of effort uh, goes into that. All right, so we're at the end of day one for you, Piscar, I'm Stu Minim. Be sure to join us uh, tomorrow for a full day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Of course, go to thecube.net uh, for all of the websites uh, to watch us live and on demand for all the shows we're doing. And once again, thank you for watching theCUBE. Oh.